For more insights and the road ahead for the company, in light of a possible increase in corporate taxes and the delayed infrastructure deal, we're joined right now by Leon Topalian. He is the president and CEO of Nucor. And, and Leon, welcome. It's good to see you today. Thank you for having me this morning, Becky. So let's talk about the earnings you just reported and maybe more importantly, the earnings you're expecting for the third quarter. You're looking for the highest earnings in your history, and that's because largely the improved pricing that you've seen. What's happening? You know, at the end of the day, when you have the right strategy, the greatest team assembled anywhere in the world, the results we're seeing today are possible. And, and quite frankly, um, I think Nucor's best days are still in front of us. So with the demand that we're seeing across most sectors, automotive, heavy equipment, agriculture, um, even some rebound, uh, while slow in oil and gas, um, create uh, an incredibly strong demand situation. Uh, you mentioned infrastructure. If we see that come to pass, um, Nucor is poised uh, to, to capitalize on those markets, including the renewable space as well. So, again, as we line up in the investments we've made over the last decade, uh, Nucor is well positioned to continue its earnings power as we move forward. But the biggest reason is just this huge demand that you're seeing. You're, you've got um, all kinds of manufacturers that are, are looking for more steel. Are there shortages in this market like there have been in so many others? You know, there's certainly the supply chains are incredibly tight. So most of the indicators that we would look in terms of inventory levels, um, whether, again, automotives with about 27 days on hand or many of the segments in, in how we look at um, service centers across the steel industry are at historic lows. So there's an incredible amount of um, restocking that's got to happen in the next 6, 8, 10, 12 months. So while there's some tightness in supply, uh, the U.S. producers, I believe, have the capacity to continue to meet the demands of, of today's market. Are you having any trouble shipping the steel to the places that it needs to get? Are there any problems in either the, the things that you need to get your um, your essentials into your plants or anything to get it, your the finished product back out? You know, the, the, the challenges are certainly there, but Nucor Resource is mostly domestic, so we're, we're able to control some of that with long-term um, agreements with our suppliers. But on the uh, delivery side, whether it's um, ocean freight or, or barges or trucks, that demand is certainly increased. The pricing certainly increased. Um, but we're able to meet the demands for our customers. But again, there's certainly uh, an awful lot more pressure in those markets getting our products to our customer base. I know that you've pushed out and reached out to Washington to try and urge them to pass the bipartisan infrastructure bill. What, what would that mean uh, for demand for, for steel and other things? You know, it certainly would have a strong uh, pull-through effect for the steel industry, but as well as manufacturing across the sector. But, you know, one of the advocacy reasons for it is our, our culture is the most important thing at Nucor, and the safety and health and well-being of our team is my greatest and every executive's greatest responsibility within our company. The safety and in, in infrastructure tied to safety is incredibly important. We're driving on roads and bridges, Becky, that have been designed in the Eisenhower administration. Um, we, we can't wait for a, a collapse, a dam failure, a road or bridge to collapse, lives to be lost before we do something meaningful. And so at the end of the day, we're going to be strong advocates. And uh, I believe we're as close as I've seen, certainly in my career, to seeing something meaningful pass. But uh, we're going to continue to advocate for it. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.